in the next two to five years, what sort of advances can we expect on the road from Ford to BMW all the way across the industry? Well, I think this is all about working together on this technology, enabling our vehicles to be able to communicate with each other. Vehicles talking to other vehicles, helping uh, drivers have awareness of other vehicles on the road to help make safer roads, reduce congestion, improve fuel economy and performance. So tell me specifically, you mentioned fuel efficiency, you mentioned the prevention of accidents, but what information is going to be collected? Well, as uh, two vehicles approach in, uh, in intersection, um, their approaching speed, the potential if there could be a crash, if a vehicle is moving through an intersection, maybe didn't stop at a stop sign or a stoplight, uh, that information shared with another vehicle to say, hey, uh, alert the driver to stop the vehicle or maybe eventually semi-autonomous where it applies the brakes for the driver. Ultimately, where do you see this? So this is something we're going to see in the next two to five years, correct? Hit the road. What, what is the technology going to be like in two years versus five years? Well, I, it'll still be at the very beginnings of uh, standardization and rollout, so it may be a little bit longer than two years, uh, maybe closer to the five year and beyond. Um, and so I think we're going to see different kinds of applications. We'll start to see applications that are more driver assistance rather than controlling the vehicle and maybe stopping the vehicle for you, maybe giving you alerts and warnings about uh, potential traffic jams, uh, uh, potential uh, real, real-time traffic. Today, we talk about real-time traffic, but it's not giving you that instantaneous feedback. It's uh, collected over time, uh, but uh, with uh, this kind of information, we'll get up-to-the-minute real-time information as vehicles act like sensors on the road, picking up information and then sharing that information to uh, the benefit of others. So why is it taking so long to get these cars to actually communicate? Well, it's all about the technology maturing, right? Uh, leveraging electronics technology and as with our partners, uh, people like Intel and, and the semiconductor manufacturers and the software guys as well, reducing the costs of the technology. Wi-Fi networks, uh, the pervasiveness of Wi-Fi networks, how uh, they've come along a long ways, a standard so that cars can uh, instantly meet when they meet, start talking to each other, and then they separate, uh, uh, they stop talking to each other, and they start talking to others, establishing those standards and then making those standards available across the industry to benefit uh, everyone. What technology are we talking about that's actually making it possible for these cars to communicate? You mentioned Wi-Fi, you mentioned right. Intel is also a part of this. Yes. Um, it's, it is fundamentally Wi-Fi technology. It's called dedicated short-range communication. All right. It's a version of the, the kind of Wi-Fi you have at home or you use with your laptop today. But the difference is, is that it starts talking, establishes a connection very quickly, transfers information very quickly, and then can break the connection because your cars are moving all the time. And that's a lot different than just sitting at your desk at home or in the office um, connected with your laptop. So the advances that you're making technology-wise to make sure that cars can talk to one another, how are we going to see that impact the price of the car? Well, we're leveraging the technology to make it very, very affordable. And um, what does that by mean? volume, <laughs> well, it, it, we're the electronics, if you look at smartphones and where smartphones started and the cost of phones uh, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and the uh, cost of the telephone today. Uh, so being able to use technology to drive the cost to not only provide the performance that we need to deliver these kinds of features, but actually do it at good value. Right, so we're, we're talking, so it, it will cost more, but you don't know at least at this point whether it's going to be $50 more or $1,000 more or even $5,000 more. Right. Well, I, I don't think it'll be in the $5,000 range, uh, but, uh, you know, at this point, we don't know exactly what the, the cost uh, will be. So who's going to be first to market with it? Is Ford going to be first? And certainly, we want to be first in introducing the technology, but we also know that um, the technology works a lot better when there are more cars on the road with it. And so we'll be anxious uh, for our competitors to have the technology as well, too, so our cars can talk to them. And then you know, we can make use of the information that, that we have on the vehicle to make a better experience for our customers. But in the very be beginning, it's probably going to be a little bit of a tough sell, I would imagine, to consumers when, right. when it may not benefit them immediately, well, at I, least the first adopters. Well, I think that's a challenge for us, and, and actually communicating what we're trying to do and so on, uh, getting customers very interested in asking for it, whether it is in their new car or whether um, uh, they're aftermarket products that they can retrofit, and we're working with uh, that challenge as well, too, to, to provide aftermarket products so you can convert a vehicle to have this capability. That's a real challenge going forward, trying to accelerate um, the implementation of this technology.